Section 6 Chemical and Physical Properties The solubility and adsorption characteristics of hydrogen with various metals are very important in metallurgy, as many metals can suffer hydrogen embrittlement, and in developing safe ways to store it for use as a fuel. Hydrogen is highly soluble in many compounds and composed of rare earth metals and transition metals, and can be dissolved in both crystalline and amorphous metals. Hydrogen solubility in metals is influenced by local distortions or impurities in the metal crystal lattice. Subsection 1 Combustion Hydrogen gas is highly flammable and will burn at concentrations as low as 4% dihydrogen in air. The enthalpy of combustion for hydrogen is negative 286 kilojoules per mole. It combusts according to the following balanced equation. 2 dihydrogen G plus dioxygen G converts to 2 H2O1 plus 572 kilojoules. When mixed with oxygen across a wide range of proportions, hydrogen explodes upon ignition. Hydrogen and oxygen flames are nearly invisible to the naked eye, as illustrated by the faintness of flame from the main space shuttle engines, as opposed to the easily visible flames from the shuttle boosters. Thus, it is difficult to visually detect if a hydrogen leak is burning. Although it is widely believed that the Hindenburg Zeppelin burned because a spark ignited the hydrogen gas it contained, the flames seen at right are actually from the covering skin of the Zeppelin, which contained carbon and pyrophoric aluminum powder that may have started the fire. Another characteristic of hydrogen flame is that the flames tend to ascend rapidly with the gas in the air, causing less damage than hydrocarbon fires. Two-thirds of the Hindenburg passengers survived, partly for this reason. H2 reacts directly with other oxidizing elements. A violent and spontaneous reaction can occur at room temperature with chlorine and fluorine, forming the corresponding hydrogen halides HCl and HF. Section 7 Compounds Subsection 1 Covalent and Organic Compounds while dihydrogen is not very reactive under standard conditions, it does form compounds with most elements. Millions of hydrocarbons are known, but they are not formed by the direct reaction of elementary hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen can also form compounds with elements that are more electronegative, such as halogens, like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and chalcogens, like oxygen, sulfur, and selenium, in these compounds, hydrogen takes on a partial positive charge. When bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, hydrogen can participate in a form of strong non-covalent bonding called hydrogen bonding, which is critical to the stability of many biological molecules. Hydrogen also forms compounds with less electronegative elements, such as metals and metalloids, in which it takes on a partial negative charge. These compounds are often known as hydrides. Hydrogen forms a vast array of compounds with carbon. Because of their general association with living things, these compounds came to be called organic compounds. The study of their properties is known as organic chemistry, and the study in the context of living organisms is known as biochemistry. By some definitions, organic compounds are only required to contain carbon, as a classical historical example, urea. However, most of them also contain hydrogen, and since it is the carbon-hydrogen bond which gives this class of compounds most of its particular chemical characteristics, carbon-hydrogen bonds are acquired in some definitions of the word organic in chemistry. This latter definition is not perfect, however, as in this definition urea would not be included as an organic compound. In inorganic chemistry, hydrides can also serve as bridging ligands that link two metal centers in a coordination complex. This function is particularly common in group 13 elements, especially in boranes, boron hydrides, and aluminum complexes, as well as in clustered carburanes. Subsection 2 Hydrides Compounds of hydrogen are often called hydrides, a term that is used fairly loosely. To chemists, the term hydride usually implies that the H atom has acquired a negative or anionic character, denoted H minus. 
The hydride anion is a convenient bookkeeping tool that does not exist per se. Alkali metal hydrides, for example sodium hydride, NaH, are polymeric and have no solution chemistry. Electrolysis of molten lithium hydride, LiH, produces a stoichiometric quantity of hydrogen at the anode. In lithium aluminum hydride, the aluminum hydride anion carries hydritic centers firmly attached to the aluminum 3. Although hydrides can be formed with almost all main group elements, the number and combination of possible compounds varies widely. For example, there are over 100 binary borine hydrides known, but only one binary aluminum hydride. Binary indium hydride has not yet been identified, although larger complexes exist. Subsection 3. Protons and Acids. Oxidation of dihydrogen formally gives a proton, H+. This species is central to the discussion of acids, although the term proton is used loosely to refer to the positively charged or cationic hydrogen, denoted H+. A bare proton, H+, cannot exist in solution because of its strong tendency to attach itself to atoms or molecules with electrons. To avoid the convenient fiction of naked, solvated proton in solution, acidic aqueous solutions are sometimes considered to contain the hydronium ion, trihydrogen oxide, organized into clusters to form nanohydrogen tetroxide plus. Other oxonium ions are found when water is in solution with other solvents. Although exotic on Earth, one of the most common ions in the universe is the trihydrogen plus ion known as protonated molecular hydrogen, or the triatomic hydrogen cation. Section 8. Production. Dihydrogen is produced in chemistry and biology laboratories, often as a byproduct of other reactions. In industry for the hydrogenation of unsaturated substrates, and in nature as a means of expelling, reducing equivalents in biochemical reactions. Subsection 1. Laboratory Syntheses In the laboratory, dihydrogen is usually prepared by the reaction of acids on metals such as zinc. Zinc plus 2H plus converts to zinc with a plus 2 charge plus dihydrogen. Aluminum produces dihydrogen upon treatment with acids, but also with base. 2 aluminum plus 6 water converts to 2 aluminum trihydroxide plus 3 dihydrogen. The electrolysis of water is a simple but expensive method of producing hydrogen. Typically the cathode electrode is made from platinum. Subsection 2. Industrial Syntheses. Hydrogen can be prepared in several different ways, but the economically most important processes involve removal of hydrogen from hydrocarbons. Commercial bulk hydrogen is usually produced by the steam reforming of natural gas. At high temperatures, 700 to 1100 degrees Celsius, 1300 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, steam, or water vapor, reacts with methane to yield carbon monoxide and dihydrogen. Specifically, methane plus water converts to carbon monoxide plus 3 dihydrogen. This reaction is favored at low pressures, but is nonetheless conducted at high pressures, 20 atmospheres, 600 inches of mercury, since high pressure dihydrogen is the most marketable product. The product mixture is known as synthesis gas because it is often used directly for the production of methanol and related compounds. Hydrocarbons other than methane can be used to produce synthesis gas with varying product ratios. One of the many complications to this highly optimized technology is the formation of coke or carbon. Methane converts to carbon plus 2 dihydrogen. Consequentially, steam reforming typically employs an excess of water. Additional hydrogen from steam reforming can be recovered from the carbon monoxide through the water gas shift reaction, especially with an iron oxide catalyst. This reaction is also a common industrial source of carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide plus water converts to carbon dioxide plus dihydrogen. 
Other important methods for H2 production include partial oxidation of hydrocarbons, methane, plus half dioxygen, converts to carbon monoxide, plus two dihydrogen, and the Kolb reaction, which can serve as a prelude to the shift reaction above. Carbon, plus water, converts to carbon monoxide, plus dihydrogen. Note. Hydrogen is sometimes produced and consumed in the same industrial process without being separated. In the Haber process for the production of ammonia, the world's fifth most produced industrial compound, hydrogen is generated in situ from natural gas. Subsection 3. Biological Syntheses. Dihydrogen is a product of some types of anaerobic metabolism and is produced by several microorganisms, usually via reactions catalyzed by iron or nickel-containing enzymes called hydrogenases. These enzymes catalyze the reversible redox reaction between dihydrogen and its component two protons and two electrons. Evolution of hydrogen gas occurs in the transfer of reducing equivalents produced during pyruvate fermentation to water. Water splitting, in which water is decomposed into its component protons, electrons, and oxygen, occurs in the light reactions in all photosynthetic organisms. Some such organisms, including some algae and cyanobacteria, have evolved a second step in the dark reactions in which protons and electrons are reduced to a form dihydrogen gas by specialized hydrogenases in the chloroplast. Efforts have been undertaken to genetically modify cyanobacterial hydrogenases to effectively synthesize dihydrogen gas even in the presence of oxygen. Other rare but mechanicalistically interesting routes to dihydrogen production also exist in nature. Nitrogenase produces approximately one equivalent of dihydrogen for each equivalent of dinitrogen reduced to ammonia. Some phosphates reduce phosphite to dihydrogen. Section 9. Applications. Large quantities of dihydrogen are needed in the petroleum and chemical industries. The largest applications of dihydrogen is for the processing, upgrading, of fossil fuels and in the production of ammonia. The key consumers of dihydrogen in the petrochemical plant include hydrode alkylation, hydrosulfurization, and hydrocracking. Dihydrogen has several other important uses. Dihydrogen is used as a hydrogenating agent, particularly in increasing the level of saturation of unsaturated fats and oils found in items such as margarine and in the production of methanol. It is similarly the source of hydrogen and the manufacture of hydrochloric acid. Dihydrogen is also used as a reducing agent of metallic ores. Apart from its use as a reactant, dihydrogen has wide applications in physics and engineering. It is used as a shielding gas in welding methods such as atomic hydrogen welding. Dihydrogen is also used as a rotor coolant in electric generators at power stations because it has the highest thermal conductivity of any gas. Liquid dihydrogen is used in cyrogenic research, including superconductivity studies. Since dihydrogen is lighter than air, having a little more than one-fifteenth of the density of air, it was once widely used as a lifting agent in balloons and airships. However, this use was curtailed after the Hindenburg disaster convinced the public that the gas was too dangerous for this purpose. Hydrogen's rare isotopes also each have specific applications. Deuterium, hydrogen 2, is used in nuclear fission applications as a moderator to slow neutrons and nuclear fusion reactions. Deuterium compounds have applications in chemistry and biology in studies of reaction isotope effects. Tritium, hydrogen-3, produced in nuclear reactors, is used in the production of hydrogen bombs as an isotopic label in the biosciences and as a radiation source in luminous paints. The triple point temperature of equilibrium hydrogen is a defined fixed point on the ITS-90 temperature scale. Subsection 1. Hydrogen is an energy carrier. Having been used as an ingredient in some rocket fuels for several decades, 
Hydrogen, or more specifically dihydrogen, is now widely discussed in the context of energy. Hydrogen is not an energy source, since it is not an abundant natural resource and more energy is used to produce it that can be ultimately extracted from it. However, it could become useful as a carrier of energy, as elucidated in the United States Department of Energy's 2003 report. Among the various alternative energy strategies, building an energy infrastructure that uses hydrogen, the third most abundant element on Earth's surface as a primary carrier that connects a host of energy sources to diverse end uses, may enable a secure and clean energy future for the nation. The hydrogen would then locally be converted into usable energy either via combustion or by electrochemical conversion into electricity in a fuel cell. One theoretical advantage of using dihydrogen as a carrier is the location and concentration of environmentally unwelcome aspects of hydrogen manufacture. For example, carbon dioxide sequestration could be conducted at the point of dihydrogen production. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Document License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl dot html